here guys, Freddy here, welcome back to another Retro Magazines. And this time I'm going to look at Arcane Magazine issue 2 from 1996. Now I've covered Arcane Magazine before, and it's a very different style of magazine to the one I usually like. The ones I like usually have lots of adventures, NPCs, ideas for role-playing games, so I can get a glimpse into the style of the game it is, and whether I'm interested in buying it, picking it up, because I've had a look into that world already. But Arcane Magazine's very much more news, reviews, very high-level role-playing stuff, without delving into individual games and giving you the meat and potatoes of what the game's about. But that doesn't make it less interesting. It's a fascinating glimpse into the role-playing industry of 1996. There's lots of reviews of stuff in here for games which were just coming out, which failed and have now been lost in the mists of time. If you're interested in joining discussion about this, I'll be sharing some of the articles with my Patreons of Librarian and Laird status. So if you check out the Patreon in the description down below, you can join the conversation because perhaps you remember some of these games. It'd be lovely to hear about them from somebody who actually experienced them. But anyway, let's have a look at Arcane Magazine Issue 2. And this time I would like to present this Arcane Magazine Issue 2 from January 1996. Happy New Year. Now... When I covered Arcane Magazine number one, I kind of mentioned how it was more based around the news of the role-playing industry and was addressing the whole aligned thing. Computer games, um, collectible card games, um, play-by-mail, um, LARPing, all of that, all of the game industry it was trying to cover. So it's not quite as focused on role-playing games as many of the older magazines I covered, the ones from the mid-80s. And another way it does this is it doesn't really address any adventures or settings. It is all much from a higher level. It's talking about the news from the industry, and it's talking about various things within role-playing itself. And it was from that period when publishing was becoming a lot more colourful. Before this, you tended to get black and white pages, maybe three colour at the best, but this is pretty much full colour throughout. It's a very nicely published magazine aimed at an older audience as well. So we've got the advert here. It's got a rather nice tattooed orc. I think that's a Dungeon Dragons cover from somewhere. And we're talking through the various stuff in here. Um, skills and powers of revolution advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Because we're at that period when skills and powers was coming out. On the other cover, we've got an advert for Robo Rally from Wizards of the Coast. A fast paced board game. Now I remember this being on the shelves, but I never actually played it. It didn't really interest me. We go inside, we've got a table of contents. Um, very nice, but not that easy to read. Um, the background is a bit busy. Got an advert for Netherworld, a 140 card expansion for Shadow Fist. We've got an introduction um, where the um, editor is saying how tired he is, the Christmas period, and then getting this ready. But I happen to know that this would have been prepared in November. It was well before the Christmas period. He's lying. Um, what I find intriguing is all the names involved. Uh, Lee Brimick and Wood. I've covered things from him before. James Wallace. Ken and Joe Walton. So many names involved in this magazine. And they did fantastic things in the role-playing industry. Uh, Dispatches. So this is the news section. So it's talking about the Dragonlance game. Dragons of Summer Flame and Dragonlance the Fifth Age are coming out. Spells and Magic. The player's option books. So we've had skills and powers and now we're getting spells and magic. Now I'll address these a little further on. We've got In Nomine. Uh, GURPS Goblins. Shadowrun Books California Free State. Uh, Battletech The Periphery. Um, Cyberpunk 3rd Edition. Uh, which I've reviewed on the channel before. I do find that slightly amusing. Uh, we've got Wood Elves, Space Hulk, a new version of that. Travel of the New Era, the Reformation Co Coalition Player's Handbook, Regency Starship Guide. So three books for that. Um, Delta Green, coming out from Pagan Publishing. Absolutely fantastic book for Call of Cthulhu. Uh, Vampire of the Dark Ages, again, absolutely fantastic expansion for... Vampire the Masquerade. Now, this really found me, I found amusing looking through it because it's talking about Slay Industries 2nd Edition. Well, anybody paying attention to role-playing knows that that actually only came out 
a year or two ago. So it's being advertised here way back in the 90s. So it was about 20 years late. And we've got Magic the Gathering, of course. An advert for a Shannara uh, PC game from Legend with dazzling 3D model graphics. Uh, Dragon Dice exceeding expectations. Role-playing take over a tax haven. Um, in Brazil for some reason. Uh, Why are computer game coming out? I don't really remember that one at all. Shadow of the Horned Rat, if anybody remembers that. Uh, Winner Data's Head, apparently. Uh, which city did they visit in the Enterprise Encounter in Time's Arrow? I believe it was San Francisco, wasn't it? Can I give a data's head now, please? Uh, famous for 15 minutes, talking about TV show, which is kind of light role-playing. That one's very tenuous. The Golden Dawn for Call of Cthulhu. Um, I believe I had this, but I can't put my hands on it at the moment. Uh, what else we got? So, Websites. Avalon Roleplaying World, Jack Vance Archives, the Doctor Who RPG page, and Surge's RPG Archive. No idea if any of those are still going. Maelstrom, Retro, an entire RPG for less than two quid. Um, Illuminati, New World Order, Assassins. News from Games Workshop, what stores are open. An advert for Boddington's Beer. You want equality, it's your round. Very 90s advertising. Uh, what else we got? Skills and powers it's talking about. The charts, so immortalised toy box for Changeling. An adventure was selling best. Skills and powers, Taint of Manus for Call of Cthulhu. Command Magazine, Unholy Allies. Cult, Compact Arkham. Regency Sourcebook, Galaxy Eye of Enemies and Allies. And Worlds Without End, a Shadowrun novel. Well, I have to admit, I've only got the 9 and 10. I don't have all of the others. I was very much out of date. Destiny Lies in the Hands of the Few in Crusade. Um, another computer game I do not remember. The Man Who Killed Roleplaying, an interview with Richard Garfield, the inventor of Magic the Gathering. Um, obviously, very part of the growth of Wizards of the Coast, but left them long ago. I believe he left the company in 2006. Um, we've got the second section of their Break the Mold, talking about archetypes, stereotypes, and cliches in RPGs. So, using them. It's quite an interesting um, article. You know, individualizing the stereotypes, taking the stereotype and adding your own twist to it, contradicting it, inverting it. We've got a page of fanzines. Um, none of those I'm familiar with. World Builder Part 2, Flora and Fauna, for building up the RPGs. Now, obviously, that started in the first issue. Different talks about Anne McCaffrey and Terry Pratchett, how they do things. I do like this one. Arcane's 10 Most Bizarre Skills Ever. Two heads from the Judge Red Companion. Basically, I remember that one. You choose to get a mutation, and your judge gets retired instantly. Um, Spurious Logic in Paranoia, Running High Heels from Macho Women With Guns, Blather, the ability to distract people by just talking at them, um, Surrender and Still Look Like a Man from Hole. Very interesting, kind of funny uh, skills in different RPGs. Shopping for Christmas, so we've got various things, hex pads, uh, battery powered card shufflers, vampire dice. And then one of the things that Arcane did was provide you with a location. So with maps and everything. And this time we've got the Golden Dragon Inn. Which is really intriguing. Oh, just notice the advert for The Dig. A fantastic game from LucasArts, I believe. With collaboration with filmmaker Steven Spielberg. I do seem to remember that being absolutely spectacular. But anyway, um, Golden Dragon Inn, it's an inn. There's various things. You know, It describes the various areas. And it's got adventure ideas. But as well as that, it's got maps, which you can pull out. But one of the maps is for a very science fiction version of the Golden Dragon Inn. So we've got very detailed ones for fantasy, but we've got this one, which is very bizarre. We've got different people who can be encountered in it, different musicians, um, smuggling that can be going on, adventure possibilities, and it's got the Zero-G Dragon. 
Golden Dragon is like a spider's web, with lines taking you from the floor to the bar and out to fuzzy spheres, suitable to stick your drinking bulb on. Um, different in names for the future and modern day prices. It's an interesting little location and made really odd by making a fantasy location also suitable for science fiction. And we're into the review section. Now, it's got a big double page review on skills and powers, mentioning how the things worked. I had forgotten a lot of this because my group really didn't get into that because it seemed to be taking things too far. You'd already got the AD&D second edition rules. You'd got all the complete handbooks, which had changed things in one way. And then you had the player's option, which took things in completely other directions. It mentions things like your strength attribute, for example. You can split in two ways. So if you've got a strength of 14 with plus one, you can have that plus one to your strength, uh, to your to hit and damage. But you can decide to modify it to change it to getting a plus two to hit and plus zero to damage, or vice versa, up to changing the attribute by four points, so the modifier by two points. An interesting idea. You can do that with your wizards as well, so they can have more spells or more powerful spells. Um, they have been quite impressed with it. We've got Freak Legion, Player's Guide to Fomori. Um, Black Dog, which was the more adult imprint for White Wolf. Dandenon. Um, don't remember this at all from Witchlight. Um, Marvel Overpower and Wildstorms. I do remember Overpower. I don't remember Wildstorms, I have to say. Got Mutant Warzone. Avengers in a Lankbar for AD&D. Taint of Madness for Call of Cthulhu, mentioned earlier in the book. Um, early in the magazine, Planescape Monstrous Companion, Appendix 2, Entomorph, Plague of the Darkfall, another computer game I don't remember, Codex Imperial Guard, I've got that lay somewhere, uh, Return of Randall Morn, Stop Slight, do not remember at all. This is really opening my eyes to how much was going on in the early 90s that I wasn't aware of. The Compact Arkham Unveiled, Secret Societies, for Nephilim. Frenzy, which looks like quite a cool, almost handwritten book. Magic Gathering 4th Edition, Homelands Expansion Set for Magic the Gathering, Spawn the Game, Country Sites, Robo Rally 2nd Edition, as we had the big advert for, Everway. Um, looks like a CCD game of some kind of description. Got various miniatures. Some really interesting ones. I like the Ratman, Bazooka, and Mortar Crew. Very Skaven. Lots of small ads. Great library. California Gothic. Um, Warren Tether. All Shadows Fled. Wildcats. Dragons of Summer Flame by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Batman vs. Predator. I've got that lay around somewhere as well. Um, Worlds Without End, it mentions this being the third part of a trilogy, but the first two parts not actually being out, because they are Earthdawn novels. I'm sure I have Worlds Without End, but I don't remember much about it at all. Merlin Chronicles, Warren Tether, pictured for a second time, Dark Knight of Karen Mykos. We've got Letters page. Um, I did notice that they do criticise Games Workshop and White Dwarf for becoming... When White Dwarf stopped being an independent magazine and became a catalogue for Games Workshop. The continuing story to be continued in the back. What's gone before. A scene and then to be continued. Um, various SSI games from Silent Hunter. Entomorph, Allied General, SU-27 uh, SU Flacker. Flanker. Very difficult to read that. And on the back we've got an... Venture for Slay Industries, The Key of Deliriad. Um, I did notice that when they were talking about Slay Industries inside, they were mentioning about them being bought over by Wizard of the Coast. Something which obviously didn't go well. So that's Arcane Magazine issue too. It's a really fascinating look back into gaming history. There's not a lot in here which you would use, but it is nice looking back to the early 90s, um, or the mid-90s rather, and seeing 
everything that was going on, how wonderfully diverse the gaming industry was at that time. But anyway, I think I've witted on for quite long enough as usual. So thank you very much for watching. As always, most of all, you look after yourselves. And I'll catch you later. Bye now. Thank you.